Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today to discuss Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows 365. We uh, do webinars here at Big Green IT about once a month, and we appreciate everybody here joining today's webinar. We've had recent webinars on Azure Migrations, on Teams phone system, and the list goes on. Today, we're going to focus on Virtual Desktop world of Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows 365, two VDI solutions from uh, Microsoft. Uh, my name again is Wade Walker. I'm uh, a Vice President of Cloud Services and with us also presenting today are Lindsay Cowan and Austin Kelly, two of our account managers and Microsoft Cloud subject matter experts here at Big Green IT. So you get three voices today uh, for the price of one and um, we're uh, looking forward to just having this presentation with you and discussing uh, AVD and Windows 365 along the way. Uh, Austin, Lindsay, can you see my slide? I just switched to the next slide. Did that go well? Yes. Perfect. And let me turn on my webcam real quick so everybody can see me. There we go. So hello, everybody. So Wade Walker here. I'm going to turn the webcam off just so you don't see me distracted and looking at things, but I just want to say hi real quick and um, put a face to the name and a name to the face. Today, uh, talking about Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows 365, which is a way to help modernize your workforce with access to a uh, Windows 10, Windows 11 desktop that you control. And it can be accessed from anywhere uh, with any device. And you don't have to necessarily have a Windows computer to be accessing it. You can access it on uh, another laptop, an iPad. I've actually done it on my iPhone. It's really hard to read because it's really small, but you can actually do it on your iPhone. Uh, we're going to differentiate between Windows 365 and AVD and find out which solution best for your company or help you with that discussion, how to provision and scale and uh, deal with and manage AVD and Windows 365. We're going to stay pretty high level at that. This isn't a deep dive technical discussion. We do have some slides at the end of this deck that we've hidden just in case we do get into some discussions on that. But for the most part, we're going to stay pretty high level. Uh, technical discussions we can have with you and schedule some time uh, after the webinar and then also discuss costs for both AVD and Windows 365. At the end we'll have questions and answers and a wrap-up. Um, if you've come to our webinars before you know they're very interactive so please post your questions along the way in the question section or in the chat section. Questions works a little bit better and um, as one of us is presenting, the other ones will be uh, paying attention to the questions that come in, and it will interrupt the conversation and the slide deck to deal with the questions that, that come in. We may pause dealing or post, uh, yeah, pause answering a question if we know we're going to address it in an upcoming slide. But please, uh, let's make this as interactive as possible. Questions you have, more than likely everybody else has. This can get confusing to choosing which solution is the best for you. There have been some name changes for some of these solutions. There's licensing questions. So the, it can get kind of complex quickly. So please do not hesitate to ask uh, questions and we'll answer them throughout this webinar and at the end. And also please note that you will receive a PDF version of this slide deck. So there's no reason for you to necessarily write things down or screenshot because we'll send this to you. And all the links that we have in the slide presentation will also be available to you. Uh, in the PDF that gets sent out. So that kind of covers our normal administrative stuff for our webinars. So let's jump in here to the next slide. Please be nice PowerPoint. Uh, connecting enterprise businesses to the Microsoft Cloud ecosystem is what we focus on at Big Green IT. Microsoft Cloud is the number one focus at our organization. And we help you really build out a, a cloud journey. Every company has a different cloud journey. As it relates to this topic, Azure Virtual Desktop Windows 365, these products are relatively new. Uh, Azure Virtual Desktop came out at the end of 2019, just before the pandemic started. Windows 365 is almost a year old. It came out, I think, in September of last year. And uh, we had a number of clients in their cloud journey rapidly uh, uh, deploy uh, Azure Virtual Desktop, which was called Windows Virtual Desktop back then during the pandemic as all of a sudden they had a bunch of work from home people and didn't want to send everybody home with their computers, but didn't want to expand their VDI solution on-prem or spend a lot of money on hardware because of the scariness of the pandemic. So 
we scaled up a lot of uh, Windows Virtual Desktop, Azure Virtual Desktop for our clients during the pandemic. And it continues to grow as a great way to deliver uh, VDI solutions to your, your employees. Same thing for Windows 365. It's more like software as a service, kind of like Microsoft 365 is. So doing VDI a bit more as a service. And that product's been white hot uh, with us as well. So we focus here at Big Green IT with helping you, again, on that cloud journey, making the right decisions uh, based on uh, uh, your business needs, and then helping with all the licensing discussions and pricing discussions. And um, we have a support team and an engineering team that deploy these services, support the services, and, and so on and so forth. We generally present this slide, too, just to show the depth and breadth of Azure. Azure is aka the world's computer, Azure regions all over the United States. So you can actually specify uh, your Azure Virtual Desktop or Windows 365, what region you want it in uh, to keep it close to, uh, to your workers, which is important to note. In addition, Azure and Office 365 are the most trusted, most secure, most compliance um, friendly solutions and services. This is just a snapshot of some of the compliance controls that we discuss with our clients. Very common ones are HIPAA, GOBA, uh, PCI credit card stuff, um, you know, so on and so forth. So we are very accustomed to, to working with you and your team on implementing whatever security control, compliance control you need, and then you know, applying it to Azure, Microsoft 365, Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365, and, uh, and the list goes on. Uh, before we go to the next slide, I am going to uh, ask uh, or put up a series of poll questions. We have three poll questions. We'd like to get your input um, on these questions, so thanks for, um, for replying to these. And then these really help us guide the rest of the conversation to make sure that we um, address things that are, are pertinent to this audience. Every audience can be a little bit different, so uh, thanks in advance for answering these ones. And I'm going to start the first question, the first poll question now. Click launch. Austin, Lindsay, do you guys see the, the poll? Yes. Perfect, okay. I don't get to see these things, that's why I have to ask. All right, we've got 50% of the people have already voted. All right, we're 20 seconds in. 95, wow, this is a very fast responding group, thank you. Well, we're really split uh, at about 50-50. Um, so about half of you are using Azure Virtual Desktop uh, or Windows 365, the other half aren't. My assumption is for the other half, you probably are familiar with other VDI solutions such as remote desktop services from Microsoft, um, VMware, uh, Horizon, uh, things uh, go on, I think. I'm gonna close this poll right now. Perfect, let's do the next poll. Uh, do you have an Azure subscription? Well, this is important to note because Azure Virtual Desktop obviously requires Azure. Uh, Windows 365 Enterprise, one of the two flavors of Windows 365, also requires an Azure subscription. So it's good for us to get to know in this audience the, uh, the number of people that, that have an Azure subscription. Man, this group was quick to vote. I love it. You're already at 75% of voted. All right, a few more seconds here. And it's about 75% uh, of you do have an Azure subscription. For the ones that don't, no big deal. Um, they're easy to create, they're free to create, and then it takes some time to configure them, but um, close this poll. And that if you don't have one, again, no big deal. We'll discuss through the process, and if you want to discuss a little more uh, um, in detail afterwards, and we can schedule some time afterwards. Third poll here. Uh, this is about licensing and cost management for Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows 365. We hit on this at the uh, end of the webinar. It's really important to make sure uh, costs are well understood for both solutions. Their cost structures are different. And, um, um, and I can see here now that almost 90% are not familiar with it, which is what I would expect. Licensing and costs for Microsoft can get really confusing really quickly. We specialize uh, in licensing and cost management here at Big Green IT. 
uh, Lindsay Austin and I will have lots of conversations with our clients on this. And um, I'm going to close this poll. Uh, ended up being about 83% uh, not familiar with it. We'll hit on it later. And then uh, there's some recommendations on how to manage costs and um, how to make sure you, you budget appropriately and then uh, manage those costs uh, um, appropriately as well. So with that, Austin, I'll jump into the next slide and you can run with uh, this next handful of slides. Sounds good. Sounds good. And I'll turn my camera on as well to put a face to the name. Um, so just want to start off by talking about modernizing your workforce with secure access to their desktop and apps on any device at any, any time. Um, so wait if you'll go to the next slide. So virtualization helps companies address virtualization specific business needs. So things like more secure access to data and organizational resources, uh, compliancy with industry regulations, whether you're in the financial services industry, healthcare, uh, or possibly even a government entity. Uh, maybe your workforce is becoming more elastic because of an acquisition, or maybe you have seasonal employees who work three months out of the year. Virtualization makes adapting to your business needs needs a whole lot easier, uh, especially over the last two years. I mean, as we all know, we've all had to pivot and adjust in one way or another. Um, so maybe you have certain employees with specific needs. For example, uh, maybe your employees are bringing their own devices and using that for both personal and business use. Uh, possibly you have a team in call centers or workers located in branches across the U.S. By virtualizing uh, dependent on the needs of the employee or business, you know, they can have access to the resources applicable to doing their job. Um, and lastly, you might think about virtualizing because you have, you know, specialized workloads such as legacy apps that you're using, um, or maybe even a software that's, you know, sitting in a dev test environment. Um, but really circling back to the topic of discussion, uh, which is Azure Virtual Desktop, um, AVD helps employees stay as productive as possible with a virtualized experience, just as they would you know, with a physical PC sitting right in front of them. Um, AVD also helps simplify management, provisioning, and access to corporate data and applications, and it also enables businesses to reduce the cost and re resources associated with managing an on-prem infrastructure. So, next slide. So like I said, AVD, or like Wade mentioned, AVD is built on Azure. And at this point in the game, I think we all know that Azure is pretty standardized across the board, you know, from a IaaS or infrastructure standpoint, uh, you know, most, if not all environments consist of some sort of compute, storage. Um, sorry, wait, I'm reading the wrong slide deck here. I think mine's a little bit backwards. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about security, then we'll jump into um, the standardized Azure. Um, so excuse me for that. So. Uh, Microsoft offers end-to-end -end security for your virtual desktops via the solutions included in Microsoft 365. So you can use uh, M365 security and management capabilities to really enhance your security posture for your AVD environment. Um, so you can use things like multi-factor authentication if you want to require a two-step verification for user sign-ins. You can enforce conditional access policies. So if you want to control how some users access remote applications and desktops, just based on the location of the user, right? So um, also by leveraging Azure Information Protection, which is included in Microsoft Defender. So if you wanna secure data, documents, and emails uh, within your desktop environment, you can do so. And then also by defining role-based access controls. If you want to control permissions within the Azure Virtual Desktop environment, um, you can do so. If so one user needs to manage uh, the VM in a subscription, and the other needs to manage the virtual network, that can be um, enabled via uh, the role-based access controls you're able to set. And then lastly, uh, using network security, you can use network security groups within your Azure virtual network to control traffic in and out of your virtual machines. Um, so lots of different uh, security parameters and policies that you can enforce to make sure that your overall desktop environment is secure. Next slide, please. There we go. That's the slide I wanted. Um, so like I said, from, you know, AVD is built on top of Azure. And at this point, Azure is a pretty standardized um, 
solution at this point. Um, from an infrastructure as a service standpoint, um, you know, there's compute, there's storage, there's networking. Um, and then from a, a platform as a service standpoint, that's available for businesses who want to manage applications and services on their own, but have someone else like Big Green manage everything else, which gives them, the business, uh, more capabilities to develop and support internal applications or homegrown software. So Azure even has a serverless architecture, which allows businesses to deploy workloads faster uh, by leveraging purpose-built and standardized infrastructures. And as we move from left to right, um, Wade touched on this a little bit, but Azure is global. Um, you know, they have the largest footprint um, out of all cloud solution providers with being in over 60 uh, regions worldwide. And then lastly, Azure is secure. So Azure provides you with sort of a wide variety of configurable security options, whether that's Defender, Azure Firewall, Azure Sentinel, Azure Monitor. Um, so there's a lot of different options for you to control um, your environment um, and implement security parameters to meet the unique requirements of your organization, right? But on top of that, and in addition to, uh, Microsoft has an arsenal of cybersecurity professionals monitoring activity within their cloud all day, every day. So um, some, some of you might not be familiar, but um, Microsoft has a Microsoft Cyber Defense Operations Center, otherwise known as the CDOC. Um, and they spend around $1 billion uh, each year to invest in this type of security um, and data protection and risk management. So the CDC is really a group of cybersecurity specialists and data scientists located in a facility that's open 24 seven. Um, and their job is to combat threats in real time. So there are more than 3,500 security professionals globally across Microsoft's product development teams information security groups, and legal teams to protect uh, Microsoft's cloud infrastructure. So, next Perfect. slide. There we go, thank you for that. Austin, now we're gonna jump into uh, Lindsay talking about the next uh, series of uh, slides here. Lindsay, can we, uh, can we hear you? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Perfect. Well, thanks, Wade. So we'll start by diving into the differences between Windows 365 and Azure Virtual Desktop and go over some ways in which we can determine which solution may be the best fit for your company. So I know we've talked a lot about Azure Virtual Desktop. It allows customers to run virtual app and desktop services from the Azure Public Cloud. Um, admins deploy the solution through the Azure portal and leverage Azure Active Directory and a host of operating system options to deliver resources to users. So it really provides the most productive and secure computing experience for users while also lowering the total cost of ownership and reducing complexity for IT teams. We'll go to the next slide. So I know we just went over a lot of those benefits, but it does enable a multi-session Windows 10, 11 experience, and it is optimized for the M365 apps for enterprise, which are included in M365 E3 and E5. It also supports Windows Server 2012 R2+. It's the most flexible service that allows you to virtualize both desktops and applications. Some services allow one or the other, but not both. It also offers Windows 7 virtual desktop with free ESU, which is really important because um, end of support is a big roadblock for a lot of clients. It's also integrated with the security and management side of Microsoft 365, so it's easy to manage in just one single plane. We'll go to the next slide. So now we'll go over the basics of Windows 365, um, considered a cloud PC. So the experience is versatile. Um, oh, let's see here. It's familiar to your users, also productive um, by delivering your users their personal content, settings, and applications. It's also simple to deploy and manage from a single admin console. So it's really easy for any person to use. It's also secure by design. So it doesn't leave any data on physical devices. 
It's also available on any device and optimized for the best experience on a Windows PC at a predictable price. And lastly, it's scalable and resilient to support changing workforce needs and new business scenarios. We'll go to the next one. So with all of this, Windows 365 is really designed around the user experience and trust by IT. So it delivers simplicity, versatility, and security needs to enable hybrid work. Um, as far as the end user experience, your users will be able to boot instantly to their cloud PC and stream their personalized Windows experience, their own apps, content, settings to any device. Windows 365 also travels with your users, so it's always ready, always updated, wherever they need to do work from. And they can also always pick up where they left off because the state of their cloud PC remains the same even when they switch devices. It's simple, versatile Windows experience, and again, personalized for all your users. From an IT perspective, Windows 365 offers, oh, I think we're still, yeah. Sorry yep, about my that. Dad, I, my dad, I had an uh, itchy <laughs> trigger finger. <laughs> so for IT, Windows 365 offers a lot of configuration options to easily scale and meet employees' needs with the right processing power and storage requirements for their job when and how they need it. We know that the procurement process can also be pretty tedious for IT right now, and Windows 365 makes purchasing cloud PCs super easy um, with predictable per user per month pricing. It's also secure by design and built with the principles of zero trust. So Windows 365 secures and stores information in the cloud, not on any physical device, providing a secure, productive experience for the users. It's always up to date, builds on the strength of rich Microsoft security capabilities and baselines that we're all familiar with. And it takes away the security complexity, complexity um, and always recommends the best security settings for the environment at hand. Now we'll go to the next slide. So both AVD and Windows 365 integrate seamlessly with Microsoft Cloud Services. So with Windows 365, you can leverage your existing infrastructure and it delivers native integrations across Azure AD, Microsoft Defender, M365 applications, and Endpoint Manager. Azure Virtual Desktop does that same thing as well with all of your M365 services, Azure Active Directory, and of course using Azure itself as the baseline um, for hosting. Hey, Lindsay, I just got a question about um, Endpoint Manager. So Endpoint, Microsoft Intune is the name of the product in Microsoft 365. Endpoint Manager is the name it's going to, and Endpoint Manager can also refer to uh, SCCM, System Center Config Manager. So um, uh, we highly recommend the utilization of Intune slash Endpoint Manager with both AVD and, and Windows 365, kind of required in some aspects, um, but it's the best way to manage these devices. Um, so I just wanted to answer that question real quick uh, while we're still on this slide. Perfect. Let me go to the next one. So here we have a side-by-side -side comparison of Windows 365 versus Azure Virtual Desktop. You'll see in that first line item, Windows 365 offers Windows 10 or 11 personalized desktop. ADD offers Windows 10, 11 or Windows Server multi-session desktops. Um, Windows 365 offers complete end-to-end -end Microsoft service, whereas AVD is just remote app streaming. AVD also offers more control over configuration and management, whereas Windows 365 is done in one-stop shop in the Endpoint Manager um, and doesn't allow as much control, but still offers a lot there. There's also predictable per user per month pricing with Windows 365, whereas AVD is hosted in Azure, so the pricing is all consumption-based. 
Next slide. So here's a really great infographic um, to help guide you towards choosing the right cloud solution. So if you are looking for desktop as a service, you don't have the VDI skills necessary. That's also, of course, something Big Green IT can help you with. Um, Windows 365 is a great option because that there are both business and enterprise versions of Windows 365. So we'll discuss that licensing in just a moment. But if you are looking for remote app streaming, multi-session, non-persistent desktops, Citrix, VMware, hybrid scenarios, um, having the ability to choose any Azure VM in re region and have low usage scenarios, then AVD might be a good option for you. If you are looking for personalized, persistent desktops, it really depends on the business model, your IT skills and experience, your priorities, whether Windows 365 or AVD would be a good fit. And again, that's something that our team can always assist you with. So next slide. Uh, we do have a question from the audience, Lindsay. Um, do I have, the question is, do I have administrative control over which geographic region the data in Windows 365 is stored? In Windows 365 Enterprise, the answer is yes, because you choose which Azure subscription. Um, you're going to put the Windows 365 um, users in, or their their VMs. And because of that, you can choose which which Azure region you want it to be in. Windows 365 Business is a, is a bit different. The best way to think of business from where data is: 99% of the Windows 365 Business VDI is at a Microsoft um, controlled Azure subscription. The network card, in essence, is in your Azure environment, um, which allows you to do, you know, see it a little bit and provision it. Uh, enterprise is a bit different, where you are actually provisioning the um, um, the, VD, uh, the Windows environment, and um, and you you control the the Azure region you've got data in. Perfect. And wait, that was Anything a great else? transition to the next slide. If you actually want to present this next slide and elaborate on what you've already covered i think that that might be a really great opportunity to help address any further questions about those two differences as well can do so yeah so there are two flavors of windows 365 windows 365 business is really intended for small companies that almost everything you're accessing is software as a service so things like microsoft 365 um you know streaming services things like that you don't need an Azure subscription. Um, the, the licensing is is built in, and there's not a lot of technical requirements. Um, people can just get it, go to Windows365.com to get in there and then um, use their their VM. Windows365 Enterprise is intended for um, companies that are a little bit bigger, or you might have a you need to access a server on on prem or in Azure. Other things like that and Windows 365 Enterprise. Most of our Windows 365 clients are using Windows 365 Enterprise instead of Windows 365 Business. Um, but it does require an Azure subscription. You've got to have Endpoint Manager, um, Windows 10, 11 Enterprise License, and Azure Active Directory Premium Plan 1. Those products, those second products, have a price associated with them, but they're included in the Microsoft 365 E3, E5. Um, and uh, Microsoft 365 Business Premium Plans. You really manage the Enterprise One through Endpoint Manager. Um, and so uh, another slide here now, you know, choosing the right solution between these products of Windows 365, AVD, and then on the far right. We've done a lot of cost comparisons for our clients. Oh, and by the way, we're using both internally. We rolled that AVD when it first came out, as we did with Windows 365, so we have, uh, we have both. and um, um, for our clients that are probably above 50 to 60 users, Azure Virtual Desktop becomes a uh, more cost uh, favorite to choose. Once you get above a, a, above you know 60, around 55, 60, 70 users, that's when there's a cost uh, trade-off that AVD becomes about the better solution. Below that, 
Um, Windows 365 is usually the better um, cost solution. If you need a lot of control or you need GPUs, we've got some clients that uh, need uh, VDIs with GPUs because they use AutoCAD and things like that. Um, right now, they're they're choosing Azure Virtual Desktop GPUs. I don't think they're released yet for Windows 365, but I know it's on the roadmap. Um, so, you know, the number of users will help delineate whether to choose Windows 365 or AVD, um, and then some of the complexity of, of the workloads. And then if you're talking hundreds or thousands of uh, users, then that's where we bring in Citrix or the VMware VDI solution on top of AV um, for managing those large enterprise platforms. So, um, so choosing those these these uh, these three different options is something we can help with. We've helped many many clients with this, and you know, choosing which one is the best um, solution for for their business. Anything else, Lindsay? No, I think you covered it. All right. Uh, this next section is me, right? Yeah, provision scale all spend. You wait. All me, beautiful. Um, so this is again a little bit of the technical discussion, but it um, we're not going to get too much of a deep dive in here. To create AVD, there's four different ways to go about it. Um, we typically do a combination of the portal and uh, PowerShell. We've done a lot of PowerShell scripting for this. When it first came out, you had to do almost everything in PowerShell. Um, so you, you kind of go through one of those four manners to do it, and then choose a VM. We'll have some VM size recommendations a little bit later in the slide presentation. Um, but it's pretty straightforward now and easy to set up Azure Virtual Desktop in your environment. Our team does it as well. Uh, we've done it for a lot of clients. And um, it's uh, really gotten a lot more um, Azure Resource Manager, Azure Portal driven, as opposed to a few years back when it was predominantly um, scripting. AVD does have a significant number of requirements. One is that Azure subscription. Two is uh, um, some Active Directory components, either a domain controller or AD uh, uh, domain services. And if you do have a domain controller, it needs uh, AVD needs to have line of sight. So if, you do, if your domain controllers are on-prem, you need to do a site-to-site -site VPN or express route or something to make sure that um, AVD has uh, visibility to domain controllers. And then we also, um, almost all of our AVD deployments include um, Intune, um, some other solutions to help manage the um, images and applications um, that are on each of the individual um, uh, individual AVD desktops for each users. You have a lot more options as we've discussed with AVD. Um, you know, I do have a pricing page later on for Windows 365 and kind of hits on you know, what you kind of patients, so a lot of options, but in AVD you have a gazillion options. You can choose so many different VM sizes, the compute power, how many CPUs or V cores, virtual cores per, um, per session, uh, user profiles, uh, launch really quickly using this. If you're familiar with FS Logics, Microsoft bought them, I forget, three or four years ago, and that really helps with uh, the Windows profile management. Um, as far as files go, uh, the chart here, the slide here says support for Azure files and Azure NetApp files. We typically use Azure files for AVD um, environments that are less than 25 users. Once we get about tw above 25 concurrent users, the um, requirements of file services pretty much dictate using Azure NetApp files, which is the fastest file service in Azure. Really absolutely an old NetApp file, if you're familiar with that. And um, you can also use the Azure NetApp files, the file storage for other things besides just user profiles. Um, but just do note that somewhere around above 25 concurrent users, um, performance of Azure files just doesn't um, pass the muster. So we really go to uh, Azure NetApp files for uh, environments above 25 concurrent users. And then as far as the apps goes, you can have groups of apps for users. So your finance team might get their finance uh, application. Um, sales team might not, so you can uh, group together apps and um, add people to groups so they get the apps and how you deploy it. You can also manage apps through some of these tools listed here as well as, as Microsoft Intune. From a sizing recommendation standpoint, um, it took me a long time to find this slide. Um, 
the original slides that we were all given and, and shown and, and, and used in the past had a much smaller set of, uh, of VMs. We don't do anything smaller than a D8S for uh, Azure Virtual Desktop. So we start at a minimum of a D8S um, VM, which is eight cores, uh, 16 gigs of RAM. Um, that's where we start at the minimum. For, and we'd usually do about five to seven, eight users per VM when we're sizing this out. And then you can see here from light to medium heavy um, power users, um, if you've got you know CAD users or really, really strong users, most everybody we target, we start at about heavy. Most pe most clients are, are um, or most AVD users are heavy. Heavy is basically using Office apps like Outlook, Word and Excel, um, and a few other things like that. So we basically start at the heavy load um, with the D8S uh, VM for, for Azure Virtual Desktop. Windows 365 deployment's a bit different. It's really a platform as a service. So it's kind of like, you know, Exchange Server versus Exchange Online. Exchange Online, you just, hey, you get email, it works. Uh, Windows 365 business, you literally just uh, turn it on. Windows 365 Enterprise does require um, that Azure subscription, uh, Azure Active Directory, um, Endpoint Manager, AKA Intune, and visibility to resources. Um, and, and setting up some um, credentials and some um, Azure Active Directory Premium Plan 1 settings. So um, if you need help with that, we, you know, we're well-versed well in setting all that up as well. And it does take a, a bit more c configuration to set up Windows 365 than when Enterprise than Business. Still a lot less than AVD, but there are still some required settings in Intune, um, Azure Active Directory Premium Plan 1, and some other uh, other things as well. Next slide, I don't expect you to um, memorize, um, but it's it's a little uh, technical in detail, but it's a good slide to have for reference. Uh, basically, the technical licensing requirements, just like we had for AVD, uh, this is also for Windows 365, both business and enterprise. The top one, you can see the license, that's you know business and enterprise. Everything else is Windows 365 enterprise, so the Azure Stub, a VNet, a line of sight to a, a DC, a domain controller, uh, your uh, Active Directory join, um, so on and so forth. So um, it's a good little, again, it's a bit of an eye chart. This next one's more of an eye chart. Uh, this is the Windows 365 licenses. This is a subset of them. And when, in Windows 365, you choose a CPU, RAM, storage uh, combination. And we have a little price um, snippet later on in the slide deck, but you choose for the, the user how much uh, CPU, uh, RAM, and disk space they're going to have. And it's also important to note that Windows 365 is kind of like their own personal VM. In Azure Virtual Desktop, you have two options, pooled VMs, where you share the VMs for the users, or a personal VM. Each person gets their own VM. Windows 365 is very similar to um, having your own VM. And Windows 365 actually does run on AVD um, in, in the Microsoft landscape. So it is actually AVD as a service, um, and it's very similar to having your own personal VM. Um, and there's some pretty cool features that have come out with Windows 11, where a Windows 11 system can literally just automatically boot into their uh, Windows 365 environment. So really cool integration with, um, with Windows 365 and Windows 11. Austin, is this your section now? Yes. Yes, it is. Beautiful. Perfect. Yeah, thanks, Wade. So, uh, talk a little bit about pricing when it comes to Azure Virtual Desktop and, and Windows 365, and some costs that you can prepare for uh, moving forward if you choose to leverage these solutions. So, when it comes to user pricing for Azure Virtual Desktop, um, you know it's it's free for the users that have qualifying licenses. Um, however, uh, there's no additional charge um, to access the instance. Like I said, if you have those those qualifying licenses, um, for External users or users without eligible licenses, there is a price, um, that of which we can help get for you if you'd like. Um, but as far as the infrastructure pricing, this is solely dependent on your spec requirements, right? So uh, amount of compute, the amount of memory, et cetera, 
all of which can be found in the Azure Pricing Calculator. Um, but I will say, a disclaimer, if you're not familiar with the calculator, it can be a bit confusing. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out to Wade, Lindsay, or myself, as we spend a lot of time in the calculator and can help you know, calculate uh, these costs for you. Next I slide. have an Azure Calculator question. Um, as Austin mentioned, um, Azure Calculator, as it relates to AVD, doesn't have all the settings in there fully baked out. There are some um, challenges to using the calculator. I jokingly say friends don't let friends use the Azure Calculator. Um, it actually does take some training on how to use it. So if you are using the pricing in there in the calculator and it is a little confusing, let us know because not every feature or not every setting is is optimized. Is, um, what's the best word? There needs to be some improvements in the Azure Virtual Desktop. Uh, pricing calculator, I'll just put it that way. So um, I'll go to the next slide now. Perfect, thank you, Wade. Um, so you may not know this, but a lot of Microsoft customers today are eligible for Azure Virtual Desktop. So on the client side, um, customers are eligible to access Windows 10 and 7 single and multi-session AVD instances if they have one of the following licenses displayed here. So it really, any of the enterprise level N365 licenses, um, also business premium. And then obviously if you have a Windows 10 enterprise license as well, um, you do get access to that AVD environment. And then on the server side, customers are eligible to access server workloads in AVD if they have RDS Cal license with active software assur assurance. Now, the great thing about AVD, like Azure, it is consumption-based. So you only pay for you know, what you use um, and the network that is consumed. Um, so if your users are only logging in three hours a day, four days a week, you only pay for those hours. And then also like Azure, if if you wanna take advantage of one or three year reserved instances, uh, you can certainly do so and save up to you know, 70% versus if you went uh, with a month to month option. So next slide. Some additional costs to be mindful of are bandwidth costs. So customers are charged for outbound network bandwidth when they use their own VNet uh, for hybrid Azure Active Directory uh, domain join and AADJ native utilization of their cloud PCs, but inbound data transfers are free. So data going into Azure is free, but data going out is not. And again, you know, there is pricing out there, as you can see on the slide here, but if you're not sure and you want to do a cost analysis, uh, you know, we're more than happy to meet with you, um, do so accordingly. And we put this slide in here on purpose because we've, we've heard from other uh, our clients that have been looking at costs and they don't necessarily look at the bandwidth costs and bandwidth mm -hmm. can add up. So if you think that your uh, VDI sessions, or a lot of data is going to be leaving the VDI environment to like it's uploading files or big sub. Just let us know. Uh, we can help price that out so there's no sticker shock um, when you get your monthly bill and say, whoa, what was this extra, you know, tens or hundreds of dollars? It's uh, it's literally the data leaving. Cash data. Stuff. Yeah. And and Wade, the, the bandwidth, that's one of those fields in the pricing calculator where it's hidden. And if you uh, unless you know where to look for it, you, you're not going to find it. So, um, yeah, one thing to be mindful of there. Um, and then as, as Wade alluded to, you know, there's different pricing options for Windows 365 and, and really it just depends uh, on your needs. And as we know, it is a license based uh, cloud PC. Um, so here, here we have three options. And like I said, depending on your, your spec requirements, whether it's two CPUs or four CPUs, there's different options available. Um, and typically, you know, we recommend standard because you can always upgrade or, or upsize your instance. But when it comes to downsizing, there's a little bit more it's a little bit more complex to do so um, but really just depends on, on the requirements of, of your environment and there's a lot more options than these but these are probably the most most popular here so yeah and we included a, a link to this uh, screenshot uh, in in the uh, upcoming slide but three of the options for Windows 365 enterprise basic is the same business as assignment options basic standard and premium and then there's a lot more customizable options um, to that so very good. Well, thank you, Austin, uh, for that section on, on pricing and managing costs. Uh, we're near the end of the webinar here at 45 minutes. So actually, on our own internal clock, we're actually hitting our, our good time here.
Uh, next step, if you have any questions with us, um, contact us directly. We have our contact information at the end of the slide deck, or go to our website, uh, set up a three um, 30 minute co consultation with any one of us, and then we can discuss you know, which of these options is, is the best for you. And if you already have a solution such as Microsoft's RDS or VMware Horizon or something else, let us know. We're, we're also a VMware uh, partner. We do a lot of VMware work and, and you know, we have clients that are using both VMware and AVD or Windows 365 just to deal with you know, whatever their business needs are. As promised, um, here are um, relevant links. So, so many of the slides have links in them and then this slide has a, a, a summary of, of all, um, a lot of these links here. So um, when you get the slide deck, you'll have access to these, um, these links here. Um, oh, go ahead. Wait, I was just going to mention, we did have a question come in from Mohammed. Um, so he was asking if you need to pay Microsoft for both M365 and AVD. Good question. So um, you choose which, well, you can use both if, you, if you're using both. Um, if you're using either, then you know you just pay for, for either. Um, we become the reseller of the, of the Azure environment or the Windows 365 environment for you. So actually, uh, we'd be sending you the invoices. We also uh, can consolidate invoices for you. So if you're doing Office 365 with us and Azure with us, uh, we can consolidate those into one invoice. Most of our clients have, have opted for that because it makes their life easier. They get one invoice a month and then um, the uh, Windows 365 and or Azure Virtual Desktop costs would be in that and those prices you saw for uh, Windows 365 are you know more like software as a service it's like a subscription and Azure virtual desktop is more of the consumption model that you, you know, the more you use the more you pay for just like the trash you drive with your car you floor it all the time um, if you don't have an EV um, you're using gas or you know your house air conditioning stuff the more you use the more you the more you pay and Austin hit on a thing also there's reserved instances in Azure Virtual Desktop to help reduce costs. There's also scheduling. You can schedule the VMs to go off after hours if you want so that they're not on. You still pay for the storage, but you don't pay for the VM being on. Um, so there's a, a lot of ways to manage the costs um, above and beyond just what's um, built in there for, um, for Azure Virtual Desktop. Uh, we'll get to the next question in a second. Here's um, a LinkedIn connections for uh, Lindsay, myself, and Austin, and a few other things um, about us. There's the, the AVD Windows 365 free consultation, and then a couple of, many, we're in a lot of programs at Microsoft. We're on their Partner Advisory Council. We are on their Data Center Optimization Team, which means Azure. Um, we also have their highest level of support, and we do a lot of work with other Microsoft partners. So if there's something that our team isn't an expert in, then we connect our clients to um, other partners that are experts in things like data warehouse and other aspects in Azure that, that um, aren't our, in our wheelhouse. So if you have any questions on anything in Azure, uh, Microsoft Cloud, don't hesitate to uh, contact us. And we're also members of the um, International Association of Microsoft Channel Partners, which keeps us you know, involved with the Microsoft uh, partner community. So for the Q&A section, uh, is there a GCC version of Windows 365? I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. Have you had? Have you looked at that one, Lindsay or Austin? Not recently. I haven't right, checked us... either, but I believe there is. Yeah, we'll check on that, um, Mark, and then we'll get back to you on that. But I'm pretty sure I don't think there's a GCC high, um, but I'm pretty sure there's a GCC version. But we'll go. We'll check and uh, and get back in touch with you. Another question is, are there user minimums or maximums for Windows 365 and AVD? No, you can have one user on each. You can have a thousand users on each. Um, but like we, met, we mentioned earlier, um, below about 50 to 60 users is the price threshold uh, where below that Windows 365 is about the best price uh, option. Above that, AVD typically is. And with AVD at that level and Azure NetApp files, you get a lot of file storage uh, that can be used for other um, aspects within your Azure environment.
Any other questions out there? We'll stay on for a few more minutes. So for those that are staying or are still on, uh, feel free to uh, send in some questions. And then um, um, we appreciate you coming out to this presentation today. And as I mentioned, we'll, Chuck will be sending out the uh, a copy of this slide deck in PDF format so that you can have access to this. And then um, feel free to ping us afterwards and uh, we can set up time to discuss this deeper. We, again, um, Super appreciate you taking time out of your day. Now we'll go spend some more time in the Q&A aspect. Uh, in an AVD pool, can users run Outlook? Uh, absolutely. So in an Azure Virtual Desktop, uh, you can have groups of users or pooled users, uh, personal pooled. They can run Outlook. Um, they can run Excel. They can run Word. I, I've got a slide in here that we can look at later if you want to. Outlook is actually optimized. Um, AVD has some Outlook optimization things where it like loads your inbox faster uh, on purpose, uh, quicker than like some of your other, I think faster than your calendar. And there's some other tweaks that are built into AVD to improve the performance of Outlook. Um, and then your cached file, your Outlook OST file, that's managed through the FS Logics containers. That's a company Microsoft bought that um, was leader in Windows profile management for multi-session BDI environments. And now it's built into to, uh, Azure Virtual Desktop. I'm going through all the other questions. I think we've answered every question. Oh, uh, didn't hear you mention OneDrive. Yes, uh, there are settings for OneDrive and for SharePoint Online. I'm, I'm sure everybody knows this. OneDrive is technically SharePoint Online. It's just your own personal uh, SharePoint Online library. But there are uh, customized settings uh, in AVD for OneDrive. And in Windows 365, you can also use Outlook uh, and OneDrive and um, SharePoint Online and Teams. Synchronize your files to the, the local computer. And then AVD has settings to uh, optimize the file sync for um, that OneDrive file sync for your OneDrive files or your SharePoint Online slash Teams files. As you know, every Teams channel is a SharePoint Online library. Um, and then in Windows 365, you don't really have to just worry about the container aspect. It's really very similar to a personal VM where your OneDrive files sync and your Outlook OST is on, in essence, the VM that you're using. But that was a good question. So thank you, AJ and Brian, for those questions. Any other questions we have? All right, well, perfect. Um, so Mark, we'll get back to you on the GCC version of Windows 365. Uh, to everybody, thanks again for joining us for this webinar. Uh, please look for the, an email from Chuck on um, the slide deck and on future upcoming webinars. And then the recorded version of this webinar will also be on our website within the next day or two or three. So it takes a little while to make that recording and then put it up there. Um, but thanks again to everybody for joining us and have a great west, rest of your day and remain your week. Bye, everybody. Thank you.